So Cameron, this is the last formative review before handing. Um, we're hopefully going to see an improved picture from the last one. Have you actioned things that were suggested in the last round? Uh, I believe so, yeah. I changed the name in the uh, proposal form. I, I've added to my research quite a, quite a bit. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Um, so dystopian islands, I see, is what we've gone for. Yeah. Uh, we've got... Um, you've added to context and research, and we're... I'm just going to check while I'm here that everything else. So we've got a proposal good. We've got authentication. Bibliography is underway. That's looking OK. That's good. Um, context and research. Let's start here. We'll kind of revisit this because um, the focus yeah. today is really planning practical production. But we'll come back to context and research, given that there wasn't too much to look at last time. Um, already, I can see that it's healthier. Like we've got a, a bigger amount to scroll down. So we've got some primary research in the form of a survey. Was that useful? Did you find that helpful? Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, it gave me some ideas on um, some character design stuff. Okay. Um, what I'd probably like to see is a bit more. We've got a lot of the actual survey information, maybe just a little bit more interpretation of like what you're going to use um, in use terms of yeah, and like how you're going to how you're going to take that information, which is good. We've got the pitch content here and. Um, we have uh, some more, some good, some better stuff for color theory. I know uh, you're just in the process of adding or writing about that, aren't you? Or blogging about it. Other research, so things like scars and things, map design, uh, environment research. Is there anything else that you know that you need to add to research that you think, oh, this should, probably should be in there? Uh, I'm going to add like, uh, like, a, like, like a suit, like kind of like a black and red suit of my clothes either, just to have as a, a third option for my character and explain how the colours of that uh, identify someone as like so uh, evil. Okay, yeah. Um, I also think uh, some research around those, we, we're still lacking research around other titles that are similar, uh, aren't we? I know we've got the, this is a, here a little bit, but maybe a bit more detail about those, including some um gameplay footage and things so although we're looking at character law and character creation um what we really want to get to grips with is is the characters from um skyrim um or from you know the, the uh, winds of change um so let's see some of that how that law and that influences the character design okay yeah i also think at this point that we're missing quite a big thing which is important to your project which is just like about what furries are and the culture oh yeah yeah, um, so that's that should be there and in quite some detail, I would have thought, because how that influences the design, the, the kind of stylings of them and research. You know, that book that you were looking at in terms of drawing techniques and processes. Yeah, that would be a good one to put on here and say that you use that at the start point of the project as a foundation. And so photograph it and maybe some of the pages or like a couple of bits that you found really useful. That might give you a bit more background to be, the topic. Uh... Wouldn't that be in con uh, plan planning? Uh, planning, yeah. Yeah, you could. Well, it could. You can argue it, but this, the research is looking at the book to get techniques and then applying it to your own work is there. So it could bridge it. It okay. could go on either page. But yeah, but definitely fairy culture, um, because obviously that was a key thing. Uh, am I right in saying that? That's from your point of view. It's a uh, kind of a cosplay type thing, or. Uh, yeah, basically. is it more of a lifestyle thing, like people actually identify as animals? Uh, well, from from what I uh, my from what my point of view, it's a, a cosplay kind of thing. Um, yeah, but there, I mean, there might be some people that think otherwise. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I got to do the research on it. Yeah, I think that's important, and I mean, it's it. it I think it is a kind of association with s sort of sexual preferences as well with that. So. You might want to just talk about or show an awareness of that um, in there. Uh, I don't know if you know about that. I'm sure you probably do. But some people have that kind of association with that culture. So it's about saying what your product is as opposed to that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, getting that research in there. The other research, I mean, now it's called it's called uh, something islands, isn't it? Yeah. Um, does that mean that it's set on an island, or is it like? Is it set uh, I fiction? have I have put the map on the planning and production uh, yeah. map I've drawn. 
Um, okay. I'm meaning to um, upload the newer version now that I've added like mountains and forests and stuff. And yeah. Like, so even though it's a fictional land that this thing that this is set in, I think what would be nice to show is an awareness of um, that in your research is the geographic location, the environment in, uh, influence on the design. Um, so a little bit of environment research and how well, like maybe how in other games that environments shape the design of uh, clothing and culture and, and just in the real world, you know. Yeah. Um, so just show how environments like, for example, with this uh, sort of uh, tunic or scarf, basically, you'd imagine that would be in a more of a sandy or, or Arabic sort of landscape where you wouldn't want to breathe in dust and, and sand, etc. You know, you'd associate that with that kind of environment. Um, and so therefore, like, you know, certain garments like lend themselves to the location that the, the characters live in. OK, yeah. so I know we've got a little bit of detailing around the uh, kind of living quarters as it were but more about the actual how the weather and how the ecosystems affect the clothing okay yeah. so that would be good and i think uh we, if we come on to planning for production we've got a gantt chart we've got mind maps we've got mood board we've got some concept art some a little bit of technique i think yeah like you say the, that book that you were looking at before for drawing techniques would be good and then we've got some characters now the thing is all these characters are great but they look very polished so I think what I would expect to see before you got to the point where this happened is some like rough workings out. So some like pencil sketches, some kind of just uh, take it back a notch. You know what I mean? So some like yeah. pre pre production sort of rough sketches. Do you have any sketchbook work that would you could scan or photograph to put in? Uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I would encourage you to get that in there because I think otherwise it just looks like you kind of just gone and jumped straight into a final design. Um, rather than exploring and that's we need that bit more exploration so rough sketches pencil sketches and workings out of things like shaders like we've got here more of this basically Cameron so this is good it's in a much healthier position than it was last time okay I'm, I'm pleased to say that it's 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 getting to where it it needs to be um, but there's still more that can be done okay yeah in terms of that so let's get that rough, rough sketching going let's get that um, extra research level going um, and just think about right okay well what haven't I covered what is what is there that I need to show an awareness of like also um, in terms of research or maybe in terms of technical um, sort of research that can live on this page things like uh, talking about uh, time um, uh, canvas resolution image image resolution these yeah, these sketches I Go didn't on. get um, the pixel size um, helpful to like the polish uh, design, but that's why it's all kind of like pixely with the other ones. Because I uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah yeah yeah. So that's it. That's something to put down as problem solving. So I need some entries that talk about problems that you've encountered. All right. What was uh, the size again? Like the pixel pixel resolution for a canvas. Yeah. Um, no less than sort of three hundred. Uh, pixels per inch if, if it's going to be something that might be printed I would suggest that you should keep it at 300 pixels per inch um, the canvas size I would work on something around two to three thousand pixels basically um, in in sort of width so if you think right it's three if you go for a sort of widescreen ratio ish if it's three thousand pixels wide and say two two thousand or slightly less high yeah yeah um, if you go for an A3 canvas, for example, at 300 DPI, which is a good resolution to put um, to put uh, sketch work down or to put high high detail concept art down up with, that's uh, uh, I, weirdly I know the resolution. That's 4968 is the width. Okay. Yeah. And I'll put the, I'll put this in the chat so you've got a, a record of it as well. So this is uh, 4968 uh, pixels. That is so pixels by uh, three five oh eight and that's pixels so it's width by height yeah width by height so you'll get a wide if you well if you want it and then obviously flip it around if you want portrait orientation okay, okay. Uh, and that will give you a, a good so if you just think right rough approximately five thousand by three and a half thousand will give you a very high the resolution canvas okay yeah so um other things that i think you could add potentially uh, if you have you had obs on at all when you've been drawing have you could you make uh, a time lapse i haven't actually uh, i okay. can i can like uh, just do it quick to 
Um, do that maybe when you're doing some roughs for the pre for the working out of shaders and things like that yeah yeah be good um and just just show it basically more working out is what i really need on this page more process more like okay this is how i shade you know this is how and things like this like these sorts of tutorials when you look at if you look at um videos where it's like okay this is how to get a, a, sh a sphere looking shiny or this is how to get an object looking sort of furry in your case you need to get that kind of matte texture that fur texture don't you where you need to try different brushes out to get that okay yeah so we're one week away from deadline we need to um get all those things action quickly and then presentation page wise you need to present up and think about how you present your final um boards as it were on this page okay yeah so it might be on this page that you put a block color down or you put some some uh, graphics down so now you've got the title um of your game it might be another thing to put on your planning production practical page um, to make a logo and put that on there and then put that onto your presentation page so if we get the title for dystopian islands uh, and put that onto onto this page and then apply your um, concept art to that page yeah yeah that makes so, sense yeah so far uh, would you say i'm at, uh, at fail grade or uh... i'd say you've you've um very low level pass i would say if i could like if, if yeah. you carry on on this course i think it's very borderline so you need to just up it a little bit all right um yeah. so we can get we can get the pass for sure but you just need to do all those things that i've said there all right and that will definitely get it to a stronger level and the more you can get into um the the detail of the final pieces and the more more really the more important thing is to show the workings out and the development of that uh, those skills as it were on this page okay so uh, would I be able to get to like say a merit uh, distinction if I really like crack down the focus for? You would have to go like stink. Like I mean, there's a lot to do if if you're looking at the higher grades. So for example, with research at the Miller, it's the idea that it's thorough and sustained research and investigation of relevant sources, inter interpretation and basically filtering the information to support ideas. So for that, I'd I'd be expecting a lot more detail in the annotation of your research to sort of give me the the uh, ability to see how you interpret that. Um, whereas at the moment, like if just we just take this one for example, I'm looking at research in winds of change. This is because the art style and character design is similar to what I want to have in my own game. I love how the cute the characters look and clearly show for different character types, such as blah blah blah. Okay, so that's that's fine, but that's more of a past level. What I would expect to see for a, a merit level is to say right, these characters have. Um, clothing that reflects the environment they're in. They have color schemes that are bright and, and quite um, eye-catching, which matches the cell-shaded art style. If we look at another game with a cell-shaded art style, such as Borderlands, that has a much more oppressive feel, which is more dystopian, which is maybe something that I want to go towards. And do you know what I mean? So you start to add lots more detail to the more meat to the bone and all those kind of cliches. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's that's where it's it's sort of coming up short. We've got some. We've still not got all the things that need to be covered in research. But when you have the interpretation of them, is pretty uh, simple at the moment. So the question, this question was asking what people think about what the fairy community is, and most people have done their research themselves, and I've heard of the fairy community in some way. This helps to get to show that the fairies and some uh, of, for them to choose which style the they like they like more. So. Again, it doesn't really tell me much about what you've got from that. If you think, right, actually, this is highlighted that people kind of have a rough idea or they think actually it's more associated with a fetish or whatever. Um, and I want to break that mold. I want to talk about a, uh, a genre that's, you know, more about a, a kind of a game style or whatever. So only again, I need more. I need a lot more detail in the blog posts. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. If we're looking to go beyond the past, that is. But I think at this stage, we just want to get all those things done. Um, especially and the last thing to do is to move on to the final evaluation and I'll go through the guidance for that um, in a minute um, but yeah more more detail um, in your blog post that you have got and then adding those things that we've just talked about and then if you yeah. want more pointers come back to me before the deadline and we can see if we can uh, look at anything else to add in between times okay yeah so it's um, sort of adding the that sort of closed research and then uh, just some sort of like basic sketches yeah and research on furries, research on uh, environment design, more process, more sketchbook work, um, and then and then thinking about the things like detailing, like canvas resolution, image size, just presentation techniques. I think that's another thing that you could look at for research is how artists present their concepts and how therefore you're going to present your final pieces. So go onto ArtStation, find other artists that have maybe presented sort of concepts that are similar to 
to what you're doing. Look at the way that they lay out the page. Um, look at the um, sort of art styles that are, um, are there. Let's see if we type in, I don't know. You uh, see what we can get, if there are any on here. And if there are, then we can look at, right, well, let's see, we, a lot of these are posed sketches. Do we have examples where we have um, turnaround boards? And if so, when we find a turnaround board, let's see, like, okay, we, we're looking at, you know, if we look, take this section of page as, a, as a, an example, we're looking at a lot of sort of chibi art style, a lot of um, kind of cutesy style with like bright colors and things and lots of uh, different things. If we look at this example here, I'm not saying this is maybe the best, but we can see color swatches on the boards. We can see at, like nice, uh, neat annotation, uh, gradient backgrounds. So, so things like that could start to filter into your um, research in terms of presentation and you could add that to your to this. So it gives you ideas about when you come on to put on, on your presentation page, how you how you show it. OK. Right. right. Lots to be getting on with there, Cameron. I'm going to leave you with that. We're going to stop um, recording at this point, unless you have anything else you want to go through. Uh, no, I don't think I have at the moment, no. Uh, actually, okay. there is one thing. Um, yeah, go for it. Because of the uh, sketches I've done there, like the rough ones, once I get, like, got the uh, audience of feedback from them, and I uh, do I create like a final one, like the final three characters uh, in the high definition? Yeah, if you've got time. I mean, we're obviously pressed for time, so you're going to have to. Yeah. You, you're going to need to go like crazy for that. But yeah, oh, that would that would be something that would make sense to have as your final piece, like right. the, the present presented ones. When okay. Yeah. Right. Let's stop recording then. Um,